Welcome back to uh, the Shroom Guru podcast, where today, instead of telling you about some interesting little factoid and how everything was actually stupid the whole time uh, since existence has started, uh, now we're going to talk about something that is stupid and currently ongoing. Uh, with me today is my co-host, Michael. Say hello, Michael. Hello. And uh, with us today is a wonderful guest who will be uh, sort of helping us with this discussion is uh, a Miss Shalice Blythe. Thank you for having me. Yes, and uh, if you want to, you can give a quick uh, sort of like your dossier, I would say, like the cliff notes of who you are, what you do. Um, yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, my name is Shalice Blythe. Uh, I am a minister of Satan with the Satanic Temple, um, and, uh, you know, Satanic Temple is very well known for its uh, stance on uh, not only religious freedom, but bodily autonomy, things like that. Uh, and I also have a lot of skin in the game personally, being that I am a, I am a member of the Uterati. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I've legitimately never heard that. That's fantastic. <laughs> never heard of Uterati. Yeah, well, you know, um, when it comes to the, the issue we're talking about today, we have to consider the fact that uh, this isn't just cis women this is affecting. Uh, this yes. is anybody with a womb. Um, and also, yeah, so it, it, um, it, it, it goes beyond the barriers. It goes beyond the binary. We're talking about, you know, trans, you know, trans people, um, anybody, uh, you know, non-binary. Um, so I figure the term uterati is very inclusive for, for all of us who are impacted. And just to make sure that, uh, all the listeners understand, uh, I will now say the words trans rights. Uh, Michael, if you could say the words trans rights, there you go. Uh, Shalise? Trans rights. Okay, good. Uh, now that you understand, um, feel free to put the hate or whatever. Great, awesome. Uh, moving <laughs> on. So today our topic of discussion is the leaked, what is it, SCOTUS, correct? That's the term for the, uh, the people? Yes. Yes, this leaked SCOTUS opinion draft um, that was uh, shared, uh, I believe it was with Politico? Yes. Yes, uh, Politico. Um, that is uh, effectively uh, deciding against uh, the decision, the final decision and reversing the decision of uh, the uh, court case of Roe v. Wade, which established a precedent uh, for bodily autonomy and general rights of uh, the people to control what they do and do not do with their bodies. Though it does have a, it's sort of like a sort of... Um, springboard case for a lot of other examples it's, it's precedent for sure um so there is other examples but that is the main sort of decision being talked about in this case and i believe the actual case was uh, uh yes uh, here it is uh state health officer thomas e Dobbs, state health officer of mississippi department of health uh with petitioners uh versus uh jackson women's health organization that is the case that they are deciding on, but if we're talking really this case is the being used to sort of bring up Roe v. Wade. And um, for those who are not um, incredibly um, politically uh, informed uh, because of the uh, 2016 to 2020 presidency, a selection of um, very affirmatively conservative judges was elected to the Supreme Court after a long and uh, sort of like a tough battle where um, a lot of the nominee or the nominee that um, I believe uh, President Obama was trying to put in was blocked for, I think, about around a year uh, before um, the 2016 election. So because of that, um, there is a 6-3 uh, slant. And when I say slant, I mean, uh, people call it a supermajority because uh, basically the three uh, not directly conservative justices pretty much don't have a say uh, in the matter, if their colleagues decide against it, all they're really capable of doing is writing um, opinions uh, dissenting. So with that being said, first of all, Mike, I believe that you had a few pointers that you would like to uh, sort of that you've plucked from this case. Uh, would you like to share those with us now? Yeah, so these are just a few things that are particularly troubling concerning some of the things that, uh, and this draft was uh, written by uh, Samuel Alito, Justice Samuel Alito. Yes. And um, so one of the first things, uh, which I'm obviously not the first person to point this out. I only know about this because I saw somebody else point this out, but um, as part of, as part of uh, Alito's sort of case against uh, Roe v. Wade, 
uh, Alito basically makes a lot of, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to make this sound smart, but also, I'm going to do. Um, Shalise, are you a lawyer? No, no, unfortunately. I'm also not a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. So to get that out of the way. Okay, continue, Michael. I'm yeah, I'm, so I'm going to try and make this sound smart, but um, uh, but Alito is basically arguing that um, that's that basically the the decision uh and the logic behind the initial ruling of Roe v. Wade sort of is uh, is incorrect um for, for in this instance uh surrounding a uh, common law and as one of the references to this he uses a lot of um shall we say antiquated English law yes <laughs> um one of the uh, individuals specifically is a Sir Matthew Hale. Who is oh, a uh, that, that English? That sounds like uh, an interesting name. What what does he do? What did he do? This is a uh, in English. Uh, I don't know what his specific sort of job title would be: barrister, lawyer, whatever. But um, he obviously had um, he uh, Alito references his opinions on the uh, the on uh, abortion, such as it was in the early you know 18th century. Uh, for those of you not informed, that is the 1700s. Yes. Um, and uh, it it has been pointed out that uh, Hale also had certain opinions on uh, defending spousal abuse or spousal rape, As and in, uh, he he had an opinion that he was in favor. Yes, okay. that it was that it that it wasn't a crime. Okay, and that he also convicted uh, two women to be burned as witches. Yes. So um, to be clear, one of the uh, main people cited by Justice Alito in this opinion is one who was um, for the protection of abusers as well as uh, for the burning of witches? Yes. yes, yes. So, so somebody who inherently did not believe that women were equal or that the, um, uh, yeah, that, that we had the right. And this was also um, around the time as well where, um, you know, when it came to birth, when it came to uh, women's anatomy, when it came to... Um, their reproductive health care um, in general, uh, this is when midwives uh, were predominantly the ones who took care of that. And uh, then when we, we started seeing this, um, we, st we started seeing opinions about, you know, women's cycles uh, around the reproduction, um, uh, people being against it, or at least, should I say men, having uh, opinions against it, because um, that's when uh, men taking over medical science started shifting and becoming more the norm. Um, so when it comes to the history of reproductive health, um, uh, most, um, it wasn't really seen as, as a, a thing that you know, uh, either, uh, religion or uh, men had much of an opinion on because they thought that was icky and they left it to the midwives um, to take care of. Um, so yeah, around around the time where you know this you know this uh, person being cited uh, was also part of the witch hunts. Um, a lot of the witch hunts were also um, uh, predominantly done against um, those that were considered um, you know engaging in in witchcraft and stuff, and that heavily impacted midwives um people responsible for um a part of um uh a part of you know birth you know birth and death and, and all these things that uh, were mainly in the hands of women and, um, um i'm sorry to interrupt you uh, Shalise. when it comes to those accusations of witchcraft by midwives um i believe that is things uh, such as uh swapping the baby with a changeling and things of that nature um like they accused women of also being like elves and shit uh correct am i incorrect in saying that yeah, as part sounds of that sort right. of like yeah. purge yeah. yeah sounds about all um, a lot like the bat shittery around around the witchcraft accusations yeah but yeah so um overall the cases being cited are important and it is important to understand that these um at least this particular um person being cited uh in the case or in the common law uh yeah is, which yeah, yeah which these people being cited as sort of precedent for what you know what 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 does common law say about uh the the, the nature of the the crime supposedly uh you know, quote unquote, of abortion, that perhaps, you know, referencing, you know, opinions from, you know, the 1200s or the 1600s maybe aren't the most politically or the uh, most uh, societally relevant today. Yes. And in addition to that, um, they are not necessarily in this opinion, um, from what I've gathered, they're not necessarily saying that 
because it was illegal back in the day, it should now be illegal. The argument, I believe, primarily being presented is that because it was ruled against in the past, the court cannot uphold it as a federal uh, sort of law, if that makes any sense. And therefore, it must be left, and um, I don't remember the exact term, but basically given uh, over to the states to decide individually, um, like it was before uh, Roe versus Wade. So, and historically in our country, that's had a lot of interesting connotations and a lot of interesting um, and abhorrent um, uh, actualities, um, especially pertaining to civil rights, yes. slavery, things like that. Say, yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is, uh, states' rights is not a great look, uh, I guess is the best no. way to put it in this case. Yeah. Uh, which actually, on on the the subject of uh, all of those individual state laws against uh, abortion, uh, moving forward a bit, uh, Alito cites many of those. Okay, um, yeah, such as and uh, basically, just there's this very little. There's a little quote, a a little passage here that I find to be very uh, choice, um, and it reads, uh, and I quote: uh, "Are we to believe that hundreds of lawmakers who votes were needed to enact these laws were motivated by hostility to Catholics and women?" Yes, the answer to that question is yes. Not yeah. necessarily the Catholic bit, but certainly the second portion. Well, and, they uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The the reference to the uh, to the Catholic bit was that uh, the uh, specifically that that sort of fears against a sort of the wave of sort of Catholic immigrants, sort of like primarily like Irish and sort of Italian immigrants, is sort of the later part of the uh, the uh, 19th century. The idea that they would essentially like have more kids than say your 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 good god-fearing protestants so that ha led to a lot of sort of anti-catholic uh sort of sentiments which i believe that is specifically what that is referencing yeah so when we're talking about um as a more general topic when we're talking about the legality of abortion or whatever right the main argument um that is being put in is that um when they're talking about um, Roe v. Wade and what is it, um, Casey as well, um, they're talking about that it must be overruled specifically because um, they don't, it's not written in the Constitution that this is a right that is to be protected federally, so they have to give it to the states. Now, I don't think it's like necessarily um, a, how do I put this? Like, that's very technically, like, 5% correct. Um, it's mainly just because there's not a literal law saying it. But overall, it's mostly because, like, I'm not... How do I put this? It's really difficult for me to put into words. Basically, the majority of this, in my opinion, is entirely a control thing. It has literally nothing to do with, like... Because there's plenty of people who believe that, like, um, uh, life begins a conception or whatever, so therefore abortion is murder. So there's plenty of people who believe that and still believe that um, abortion should be legal because of uh, there should be a choice in the matter uh, by the person in question, man or woman, giving birth to the child. And I wanted your general opinion on that, uh, Shalise, or if you have any extra context to add to that, um, because the majority of people are in favor of abortion even though like there isn't a sizable number of people who are in favor of allowing abortions to occur, even though they believe that after a certain point it is murder. So I wanted, I wanted to sort of hear your, cause you're much, well, uh, much more well-versed in the topic. I want to sort of hear what you thought about that. Well, um, if we want to kind of talk about the core of what's, happening and why what's happening is happening, um, we have to look at, we can, you know, definitely start with Alito's opinion, which begins and ends with the, this uh, topic of morality. And morality, um, you know, really can't be divorced from religious ideology, right? And uh, even Sotomayor, Justice Sotomayor, during the oral arguments, uh, made that point of how is this not a, a discussion about religion? How is this not a religious thing? Then, as opposed to us talking about, you know, people's inherent rights and constitutional rights and things like that. So, really, what's happening is just Christian national nationalism trying to reassert dominance. Um, 
you know, what I see here is, you know, this is this is the rage of dying privilege. Um, you know, white Christian conservative men um, are seeing their power diminishing. Uh, they're seeing their status as the dominant class in America going away. Um, you know, and so when it comes to when it comes to this, the, you know, th this decision is representative of of a minority, right? Um, you know, uh, predominantly, if you look at the numbers, um, no matter people's religious backgrounds uh, or whatever the background is, um, when you look at the whole the, the country as a whole, um, support for abortion, you know, whether or not it comes with the caveats, but essentially the the need for a a medical procedure, a medical decision that somebody makes with their doctor um, uh, is 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 supported. It's it's predominantly supported throughout the country. So you have you have this small minority now, these, um, you know, white Christian conservative men, um, you know, they're, they're seeing what we're all seeing, right? They're, um, they're using lifetime appointments um, in an unchecked branch of the government um, to retain and reclaim their status and privilege. You know, they're seeing their pews emptying, they're seeing their labor force dwindling, they're seeing people of color ascend to equal status, uh, seeing gender and sexuality no longer being confined to the binary, and they're terrified. So, um, you know, this is their way of trying to reassert their, what they see as being, you know, what it should be. And, um, you know, and if we want to talk about it from a religious point of view or, you know, this idea of, you know, when life begins, you know, is, is abortion morally right? Um, this is purely a, um, this is purely a religious view because, you know, depending on your background, depending on what your um you know what your views on on the topic is a lot of it is motivated from your um your your general ideology um you know you have satanists uh who generally uh you know have no connection to any higher power or anything like that satanists are generally um atheistic in nature um but uh bodily autonomy is part of you know one of our inherent you know tenets um you know one's body is inviolable subject to one's own will alone and you know that covers an array of topics um but you know when it comes to what someone does to their body you know the the topic of abortion is a part of that and um it is up to the individual to decide how they conceptualize you know if they do become pregnant um you know their decision to um, not only see not only view it in terms of if they believe that this is a unique individual you know separate from themselves uh, also, how they deal with that pregnancy, whether it's wanted or not. Um, and this isn't just confined to Satanists. Um, you know, in Jewish belief, um, life starts at first breath. Um, abortion is permitted, and um, in the instance of the mother's life being at risk for any, you know, for any complications of the pregnancy, it's considered a mitzvah or blessing to save the mother's life by way of terminating the pregnancy. Um, you know, sorry, you've got Ashley, Buddhists, um, Unitarians, huh? I'm sorry, uh, to, not to interrupt or anything, but um, when it comes to the Jewish belief as well, I believe, and at least I've heard it said, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they consider until the the child is born, takes their first breath, um, it's considered a part of the mother's body, not a individual with rights and things like that. It's not a unique individual separate yeah. from the mother. Um, yes. And uh, that's, you know, and, and, and Satanists believe that as well. And then, you know, and then you have other religions. So you have Buddhists, Unitarians, even, even you know, Muslims. So um, so the, the fact that we are, um, you know, this, this idea, this concept of when life begins, um, when does a, a piece of biology become a unique individual human being? Um, that is a religious, that, that is purely a, a religious point of view because everyone has a separate point of view. And even if you're an atheist, um, you know, you're, you're relying on, you know, science to inform your beliefs on that. And, you know, you, you'll encounter atheists who are, you know, would not choose abortion for themselves, you know, because of how they contextualize what pregnancy means to them. But, um, but because this is a religious point of view, um, we are, um, the, the fact that we are, that it, it's being used as a justification to completely outlaw it is absolutely abhorrent because it is a, it, it's, it, it's a violation of everyone else's beliefs. You know, it's essentially taking one conservative Christian point of view and saying, you know, this is, 
you know, this is the, the standard of which we need to apply all of our understanding of this. Um, you know, they're, that's essentially what they're saying without saying it outright, but this is what's happening. So, it, you know, this is not only a violation of people's inherent right to privacy, which is actually what Roe v. Wade was. It wasn't a, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a law that said abortion is legal. It was, you know, you have a right to privacy. You have a right to make um, decisions about your personal life, you know, and not have the state interfere with those personal private decisions. And, of course, abortion is a part of that. But you know what else is a part of that? Um, the decision to um, have intimacy with whom you choose is a part of that privacy. Um, marriage is a part of that privacy. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that are now going to be under threat that have been actually been covered under Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade has actually been the basis of a lot of other lies, laws when it comes to marriage equality, when it comes to um, you know, other things like that, that are considered private personal decisions um, that could now be under under scrutiny and could be outlawed by the states because, you know, again, you have white Christian conservative men or white Christian conservative women um, who, by the way, I think it's also worth pointing out that the people who are trying to take our white rights away from us are always going to enjoy those rights. This will not affect this will not affect uh, the, the Christian conservative men who are uh, impregnating, uh, you know, whomever that are demanding that they have an abortion. It is not going to impact their mothers, their daughters, uh, their wives, their, their mistresses, nothing. It is not going to affect the people of which their behavior is going to have that impact on. They're always going to be able to find a way. Um, whether that's flying to a different state, different country, uh, they will always have the means and they will always have the need. This is going to impact the rest of us. You know, it is going to impact the poor. It is going to impact, you know, those in abusive situations, uh, those who are already struggling um, in um, parenthood. It is going to deeply impact the LGBTQ community. It is going to deeply impact people of color. Um, it is going to impact those who, um, you know, the, the need to have access to medical care um, is already a struggle. You know, even me being a cis white woman, um, I had my own experience when I was a teenager that even though I lived in a, in a world of Roe v. Wade, um, I was impacted by abortion restriction and almost died. Um, because of that. So even even in my circumstance, I was, you know, impacted by restriction. And so it's not only it's just, just going to get worse. And it's not just going to impact this particular topic. It's going to have it's going to be a domino effect. Yeah. And um, and it's all based off of um, a um, a very small, uh, a very small group of people who have enjoyed privilege. Um, who are seeing that privilege um, go away, or at least seen as equitable to um, to those that they feel they are um, they are better than, and uh, this is this is how they're this is how they're using it. They're weaponizing our courts, um, you know, against the people, um, and it's just. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Also, yeah, you can use the <laughs> bad words. Uh, I was actually and, uh, <laughs> Uh, to that point, um, and I quote from the uh, initial draft, uh, the inescapable conclusion is that a right to abortion is not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. First of it all, so I'll, I'll let that breathe a little bit. Continuing, <laughs> on the contrary, an unbroken tradition of prohibiting abortion on pain of criminal punishment persisted from the earliest days of the common law until 1973. So effectively, and that is directly from the initial draft, um, it is an appeal to tradition um, that is almost entirely relied upon in order to sort of uh, overturn this decision. And I think that speaks to what you were talking about, where people sort of, um, they're losing their privilege, uh, or at least they are having an equitable amount of privilege to the people that they believe that they are better than. And in a way to do that is because of the way that um our government currently functions it has a um sort of conservative slant in terms of it is more difficult to um move things forward than it is to either slide them backwards or keep them the exact same uh so the only real way 
to protect those rights you were talking about, such as uh, right to marry whoever you'd like, uh, right to um, an abortion, things like that, right to your own body and bodily autonomy, would be to federally legislate those and put them in the Constitution. Because if they were in the Constitution, there is um, no way that this opinion could ever possibly pass scrutiny. Because they literally say, um, basically, because it is not a uh, an amendment and a federally guaranteed right, it is up to the states, and obviously the states will do bad things when given the power to. Um, uh, what is that saying? We don't have king. We don't have a king, but we have barons and dukes or whatever. Uh, but what is it? Something funny, Michael? No, <laughs> I'm not here right. spitting. But uh, <laughs> in any case, so the real uh, way that one would go about fixing this situation would be to pass a uh, an amendment to the Constitution. The problem with that, we have. Yes, I say the problem with that currently is that the current makeup of um, the overall government structure being both the courts and uh, the way that the legislature currently is makes that rather difficult. Basically saying that at the moment, um, it is very difficult to protect these rights. So those people that you talk, these, these white conservative men primarily, um, are sort of, as part of their last ditch to restore what they think is their proper place in the world, um, they're trying to sort of grab at the only avenues they have, and they're taking very drastic actions in order to, hopefully for them, um, what they would imagine to be uh, secure power and privilege for themselves and remove it from other people uh, in the future, regardless of what president or legislature we might have in the future. And I also wanted to, um, as a question to you, a sort of like, um, well, I'll just get to it. Uh, when people talk about, uh, so, like, the right to an abortion being, like, uh, when does conception begin? What do you have to say to those people that say, if I believe, let's say I am a believer in religion X, and you're a believer in religion Y, and your religion Y is some form of atheism, and I am, I believe, in a higher power, and I say that uh, whenever, uh, I don't know, the first, whenever the, 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 fertilization first occurs that's it that's instantly when there's a person right literally the the moment that it can even be possible i believe that there's a person what do you say to the people that say because i believe that and you believe that some there is um sort of like you have to uh wait until the baby is born for it to become a person technically i am saving a life whereas you are simply um removing one and they believe that that is murder do you believe that they have like sort of a right to at least protest um that uh right and do you believe that um how do i put this those people even though they may not be right in your eyes because they believe that it is something so abhorrent that their voices should be counted as greater than um the chance that life doesn't begin under their idea well, if somebody were to come to me with that, well, I believe, you know, yeah, like, I believe this, um, my immediate response is, well, that sounds like a personal problem. Mm -hmm. And um, that, to me, is uh, the, the kind of the root of it. Um, sure, people have a belief in, you know, when life begins. Again, it's a, a personal religious opinion. Um, and they are more than welcome to express that. Um, they are more than welcome to make their belief known. And they're also more than welcome to live by their own ideology in the fact that they, um, if, if a circumstance were to occur where they, um, uh, were to become pregnant and uh, their beliefs say that they can't have an abortion for any reason, meaning uh, whatever the circumstance of that pregnancy is that, you know, well, they believe um, uh, it is a un unique individual life and that should be respected, then that's their choice. And um, I support their I, I support the fact that they have the right to their opinion on that. And, you know, nobody should be forced to um, make a decision one way or another against their beliefs. Um, but we're not talking about people who are merely expressing their opinions. We're not dealing with people who merely, um, you know, sit outside of uh, clinics and harass um, patients 
um, that require protection from uh, volunteers because otherwise they'd get harassed or physically assaulted or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about those people. We are talking about those in power who are asserting their opinions on the matter onto those who do not share that same uh, belief or opinion. And they're going so far as to interfere with medical science um, in how um, healthcare providers provide treatment to their patients. And that's in particularly egregious to me because I am a healthcare provider. And one of the things that's been happening in, in my realm since, um, since this was, uh, you know, made uh, clear to, or, you know, once the opinion was leaked is how are we going to provide the best care to our patients, um, knowing that any day could be our last day because someone's going to come in and arrest us? Um, it, it is an absolute violation of our oath, uh, of our belief in the second you walk through that door, the second you become our patient, all political religious beliefs stop and our commitment to providing the best possible care to you um, is where that starts. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's terrible. And I, I've been seeing a lot of people who do provide abortion services, um, you know, they're having to have that conversation about, you know, um, am I still willing to do this despite the fact that I am going to be made a felon by doing mm -hmm. something that is like, it seems so inherently non-issue, provide health care. And that's what this is. It's healthcare. It's it's not a. But but anyway. Um. So um. To you know. To your question. Do they have the right? Of course they do. But they don't have the right to um, make laws and um, make it impossible for others that do not feel the same way to um, limit their ability to access healthcare. Um. You know. Their religious views are prohibiting me from having a conversation with my doctor about what's best for me in my circumstances that are um, not only guided by, you know, the, the, you know, my, uh, you know, how I live my life, you know, how I'm employed, not employed, um, you know, those things, but, you know, my capabilities of, of being, um, being able to bring a life. Like I personally, um, I am not, Pregnancy will kill me. Um, I've had a lot of reproductive um, issues. I actually almost died in 2018 because of it. Um, I had to get emergency surgeries, and and uh, you know, I I was very much looking at a. I was very much looking at death because I was told again and again that I could not take my reproductive health care into my own hands because, well, what if you change your mind in the future? Mm -hmm. What if your future husband wants children? Um, you're too young to make this decision, even though you have health uh, health issues that make this the most sensible thing in the world. Um, I almost died because of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're not talking about just abortion. We are talking about people that have the belief that life begins at fertilization. And if you know anything about the process of fertilization, you'll know that there are complications that can happen completely outside of the pregnant person's control, such as ectopic pregnancies, such as um, non-implantation. I mean, you know, you could you could have a fertilized egg. It won't attach to the uterus. It won't attach, you know, uh, you know, it, you know, it won't happen, and it just sheds out with a normal period. Mm -hmm. And so, if if the belief, if they're going to put into our laws that you are that you are a murderer simply by, um, you know, not only by way of abortion, but by just how biology in general works, then that's going to make a lot of felons. And you want to know mm -hmm. what felons can't do? They can't vote. They mm -hmm. can't. Um, they don't have a voice anymore when it comes to their rights. And this is again. The, the domino effect we're seeing um, because these religious zealots are um, in, uh, they are allowed or they have been allowed um, and they have a, they've had this strategic goal for many, many years to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop here. It, it just isn't. And, you know, um, yeah, they, they have the right to think it, but they don't have the right to enforce it or uh, force it upon other people. Is the a, very long-winded way to answer your question. No, you're fine. I think you had some really good points. 
Um, another thing I would add as well is that that fear in the healthcare profession of becoming a felon due to oaths and your job and actually wanting to help people is part of the plan. It's not, I think that a lot of people do this thing where they'll take laws and this is, they like to be framed this way by conservative people, that laws are this nebulous thing that exists outside of human people. It exists outside of like, it's, it's a force. It's a force that acts upon you. It is not simply something that people do to you. So when people are talking about like, oh, I'm afraid of becoming a felon based on giving my, uh, what I believe to be the absolute best treatment for my patients, um, that is part of it. They want you to feel that fear. They want you to be afraid to do what you think is right because they want you to have less power. They want you to have less agency. And it's not because the law says so. It is because those people want the law to say that because the law is the speaking voice of power, typically. That's how that works. So once they have um, codified or refused to allow the codification of a law, that is going to affect you directly. You are not being acted upon by the system of government any more than you are being acted upon by the people who control the system. So whenever people are talking about like, oh, I'm afraid to go an abortion clinic because I'm going to be harassed by people. Well, the only reason that you are allowed to be harassed by people is because of a lack of protection. The same goes for the people who become felons as a result. And it's also like to your point where if somebody um, uh, with their normal cycle loses the fertilized egg, that would make them a felon. So the idea is that the overall opinion of overturning world, it doesn't pass legal muster. It doesn't no. pass philosophical or religious muster. And it is an unpopular decision uh, perpetrated by a small group, at least a minority group, I should say, uh, of people who want to um, keep the conservative um, like uh, roots of the country alive to preserve privilege for themselves while taking it from other people. And I just wanted to say overall that when you say that it's more than just abortion, I 100% agree. A lot of the same things you said as reasons that people would be afraid to acquire an abortion are very similar to those uh, affecting, for example, trans people. Um, I believe that uh, become, going on a hormone replacement therapy plea and things like that, that is a full expression of bodily autonomy and therefore should be protected um, regardless. You should be allowed to make that decision. But people say like for you, like they were saying, oh, you're not old enough to make that decision. What about the, your future husband? Things like that. It goes the exact same way with trans people. The arguments are always the same. They're always trumped out the same way by the same people. And the only real way to defeat it is to fight back against it. And as I said, if the mechanism for the oppression of people, especially um, those who are capable of bearing children, uh, and to a greater degree uh, outside of this particular instance, uh, trans people, uh, people who would like to enter a um, same-sex pairing, things like that, the only real way for you to um, sort of fight back against that is to either A, take control of the system, or B, ignore the system, which would obviously make your life awful because then the system would you know take control of you by sending you to some type of prison being a felon such mm -hmm. as that so overall yeah. it it really is like you said it's very very important that we understand the magnitude of allowing this decision to pass without fervent opposition and just it, it's not a precedent that should be set ever because it is allowing no. a small group of people to control basically everything uh, in my opinion, and this is opinion zone, this is opinion zone. Yeah. Um, well, and, and, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, and, and we talked earlier about, uh, you know, the, the justification being, you know, we're, we're talking about tradition, right? The tradition of, of uh, those, not only who wrote the constitution, but, you know, where, where things were, um, is completely historically inaccurate in and of itself. I mean, we're talking about the, the criminalization, um, the criminalization of abortion really didn't um, take place until like the 1880s, right? The vilification criminalization. And, and this, of course, can't, comes after the formation of the, what is it? The American Medical Association, the AMA. AMA. Um, and, you know, these were a bunch of male doctors, again, male dominated authority of medical practices. And they were very, um, they scrutinized reproductive health care workers, which were, again, the midwives, nurses, those who were uh, subject to, um, you know, witch hunts. Um, 
uh, in around. So, but to that, I mean, you know, this country um, in and of itself was founded well before that, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, there were people, well, the colonizers were already here. Um, so those who colonized and, and you know, those who um, decided to, um, you know, uproot and uh, kill the those who were already here, um, part of their practice already involved, um, involved this concept that um, things like, you know, women having agency over their reproduction, um, not even necessarily abortion, but the ability to control their cycles. Um, you know, we've got, we've got, um, you know, uh, recipes from, uh, I can't remember which founding father it was, but you know, they had, uh, they had a recipe for an abortifacient and it was, uh, it was contextualized as, you know, and, and uh, those for the, the viewers, uh, what, it, or the listeners, what exactly is that recipe for? I'm sorry. Abortifacient, uh, basically a, um, uh, a, a substance or, you know, now we have like, um, now we have like pills, abortifacients, but, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, prior to there would be certain herbs um, and a, basically a, a concoction of things put together that would um, induce a period, would induce someone to go, you know, to, you know, have, uh, have a period, whether they were uh, pregnant or not. Um, and this was not seen as a bad thing. This was seen as a normal, um, this was part of, you know, the icky girly parts, you know, cons you know, when it comes to a male point of view, um, that was part of their thing. And very few groups that were um, here who, who, you know, colonized um, saw this as a bad thing. So again, if we want to go back to the traditions of the founding of this country, um, seeing abortion as not something that was a part of that, that is just inherently false, you know. Um, you know that was not something that even existed or was even vilified until like the 1880s. And uh, this all goes back to when men wanted to take control of of a medical practice that did not um, that did not belong to them. They did not have power over. Um, so yeah, that that whole argument is bullshit. And you know, it's like again. We have amendments for a reason. You know, the Constitution should not be seen as this perfect document because it's not. That's why we have amendments. And um, if you look at the Ninth Amendment, you've got, you know, the federal government doesn't own the rights that are not listed in the Constitution, but instead they belong to the citizens. So, um, you know, certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. And so this is a right that um you know even certain states have codified into their own um into their own state constitutions there there are some states that have just outright said you know abortion is legal here um you have the right to reproductive health care and um that that is that is, that was you know it, it's it's in the it's in the state's laws um and um so it just it kind of you know again we we have these things that have that have the you know quote unquote tradition have the the precedent of um, you know saying that you know Roe v Wade is not flawed but um, you know you've got people on the court that were put on there um, that are you know supposed to be neutral but clearly they're not um, uh, you know making their will um, be uh, put over put over everybody. And uh, Mike, you've been a little quiet. You have anything to say? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mike, I, let me rephrase that. Would you like to make any uh actionable threats? <laughs> actionable against threats persons? against named persons. Um, <laughs> yes, I would. I would simply like uh, Samuel Alito to have a nice time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I guess. Um, wait, wait. What's, yeah, that? Do, what's uh, that thing? Um, maybe he'll catch the measles someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I guess just to um yeah to, to sort of out, we'll out. <laughs> <laughs> just to repeat some, some some sentiments um that uh yeah it's really important to uh to not see uh this decision sort of in a vacuum um and to see that this is you know part of the uh, the sort of larger um blitz that has been sort of uh being been carried out over the last like year ish or so against just sort of like various aspects of like public education and now sort of infringing into sort of civil uh civil yeah, rights and liberties racism theory yes yeah, um yeah. and i mean it's you know and this is sort of more the f sort of fully kind of mask off uh goals and sort of operations of the uh of, of yeah again the old white generally christian men that want to sort of see these things uh 
put through. Um, and, the irony uh, of them shouting about fucking John Dogwell, nineteen ninety three or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in comparison to what that's like, literally what they're actually doing, um, is very very funny to me. By the way, yeah, and um, and another uh thing which is uh, I guess sort of a moot point but it it I feel it's worth sort of bringing up is that uh granted I d- I haven't read like this entire opinion Come draft on, stop like, waffling mike you got it <laughs> fully uh word to word but um yeah uh, alito makes no absolutely no uh room for um uh I, g- I guess what you would call like non-elective sort of instances of uh requesting an abortion uh particularly sort of like life-threatening sort of uh uh medical uh 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 i'm trying to find the right word um yeah (laughs) anything to do with uh maintaining uh the life health and safety of the pregnant person yeah exactly that being yeah yeah and um by sort of leaving that up to the states obviously it's it sort of hypothetically if Roe obviously is just sort of gone now we have sort of a patchwork um dotting of various states where it's either more restricted just outright illegal or legal to get an abortion and if you know you need one and your state won't allow you to have one like you could either you know and if you have the resources you could travel but i mean it seems that like and there have been instances of this of this in the past where you will be punished if the state can make that happen yeah yeah um yeah well they're already they're already doing that i mean we we've talked a lot about you know this this domino effect and it, this isn't just about this isn't going to be just about abortion right because you're talking about your right to privacy and mm-hmm. your right to privacy has yeah. many many different um <laughs> aspects right um, you know, they've already started going after trans kids, you know, their right to privacy, their right to, um, you know, uh, the right to medical decisions with their doctors that are um, supported by their parents. I mean, that's already started going up. The, that, that's already started becoming uh, an issue that, you know, they're making, uh, they're involving CPS. Um, you know, parents can be considered yeah. felons if they if they go, um, if they follow the medical advice of a doctor as far as transition or whatever the case may be. Um mm-hmm. You have other states that are wanting to uh, give personhood, legal personhood, to a fertilized egg. Um, and that's going to have some serious implications, not only for um, the, the pregnant person, um, you know, whether or not they want the pregnancy, but also in, um, ish- in, in, in instances where they want, they want the pregnancy, but the pregnancy will kill them, whether that is an ectopic pregnancy, whether that is an issue of a fetal uh, abnormality uh, and uh, or like a a miscarriage. I mean, I I myself have experienced a miscarriage of a very wanted pregnancy and, um, you know, it was absolutely devastating. And I can't imagine what it would be like in a world where this thing that I did not have anything to do with and that I, I wanted the pregnancy, I was very attached to this, uh, this baby um, that I conceptualized as being at the time and um, having lost in a very, in a very terrible way um, that I would be considered a felon because of that. Um, Mm. and, uh, you know, it, it, it was nothing more than biology, just having, having a mishap, it just does what it does. Um, uh, later I found out there was a, there was an abnormality, like there was, you know, something wrong. So, um, uh, so it's going to go to medical emergencies. It's going to go to, um, uh, (laughs) Uh, there's this uh, placental uh, placental ab- uh, abruption, which is when um, something there's there's uh, the placenta detaches the placenta detaches from the uterus. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it, it happens sometimes. Um, there are very different reasons why, but that is actually a very lethal thing. Uh, it is lethal to not only the pregnant person but the tri- but the but the fetus. And uh, sometimes again, you know. Uh, uh, a medical doctor, a medical doctor has to make a decision with the patient as far as how they're going to deal with that. Sometimes it can be saved, sometimes not. And the fact that a that a lawmaker who knows nothing about these these things has no medical degree um, 
uh, does not have that lived experience, um, nothing like that. The fact that they are now inserting themselves between the patient and the doctor to say, you know, you are doing this thing that is morally reprehensible to me based off of my views on life and my views on things um, is ab absolutely abhorrent and, and should never happen. Um, and it, it just, it, it, it's so it'll impact those things um and again if we really want to start thinking about these bigger implications too um outside of uh medicine outside of medical decisions uh the, the right to privacy to medical decisions you know you're going to start getting into you know legislators thinking they have the ability to determine what you do in the privacy of your home with um you know those uh you know those who you uh, are romantic with non-romantic with um those consenting as well yeah uh, yeah i mean basically at the at the heart of this they're taking your consent away from you mm -hmm. uh, you are they're, saying you can't do anything that i don't consent to they're actively expanding the panopticon yes um i'll also say that um we're coming up on our time for this episode in particular um but i wanted to go ahead and uh uh Shalise, i thought that was a great um sort of like uh, summation do you have anything that you would like people to know any organizations you'd like to um sort of direct people to anything that they could possibly do to help in the fight what, what do you have um well first of all fuck these people but um <laughs> yeah. as far as what to do i mean that that can look like um a lot of different things based off of people's uh abilities um mm -hmm. Uh, I guess continue supporting the organizations that are either providing a so I so as of recording we're we're recording on Mother's Day today by the way yes, which I find really on Mother's for, Day. Fingers crossed. for the topic um you know and and one thing I will say about that is uh you know um we're you know we're talking about this topic on Mother's Day you know it's not only important to celebrate those who have or had had um uh motherhood but also we should celebrate the fact that motherhood should remain a, cho a choice and a safe choice um, so that's what I have to say about that on this particular day. Um, so with with that, um, you know, if you're able to financially contribute to things, um, I would say those who are uh, still able to provide services to those seeking care, um, there's always there's always Planned Parenthood. There's always uh, various. Um, uh, um, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head, but you know, I think you it's, can just Google. It's not necessary. I can always um, put it in the. Um... The links. Um, if we yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So there are not only funds that help with the uh, acquirement of medical care, but also they help with funding uh, if you have to travel, uh, if they're lodging, mm -hmm. uh, travel, things like that. So uh, helping those who um, are needing needing this medical, um, you know, medical intervention and uh, are financially prohibited. Um, there are lots of funds out there that, that help um, not only from national, but state. Um, and, um, I guess, you know, if people really feel the need to go to protests, uh, protest safe, there's a lot of protest tips on how to, uh, maintain your safety while out there, uh, make your voice heard in that regard. Mm -hmm. I personally don't engage in that because I, I, um, you know, I, for me, it's not, for me, I, I don't see that as helping, but, uh, others, uh, do and uh, others, you know, feel that that is how they can contribute, and that's fine too. Um, and um, you know, we've got uh, we've got some midterms coming up, mm -hmm. and um, before we lose our rights to vote, um, before we lose our ability to have a say in uh, those who represent we the people, um, I think now is a really good time to take a look at. Um, I'm, I'm not going to tell anybody how to vote. What I would, what I would like to implore people to do is, um, before they lose the right uh, to do so, they should uh, look at the candidates who are running for, um, you know, local, state, um, uh, any anything, uh, anything um, where they are running for an office that is representative of of you. Uh, you know, take a look at what they have, you know, said about their stances on things um, of the the issues that are important to you and make sure you show up make sure you do the thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it I, I know that I know that they said that the Congress is going to they're going to vote to try and codify Roe v. Wade on Wednesday. And, and it's the fucking Democrats are fucking useless. So they're they're probably, you know, they, they, yeah. they don't have the 
fucking balls to do shit. So that's not going to happen. Let's just not rely on that. However, um, you know, these these other these other elections that are coming up could have a cascade um, effect of who's uh, who's representing you in Congress, who's representing you, um, you know, in in you know your local councils and everything like mm-hmm. that. So, t- you know, whatever topic you care the most about and you feel is under direct threat right now uh what well not not feel what is under direct threat and is is going to be taken away from us uh in next month um and um so, you know try to uh i guess vote vote with your conscience i guess um but but do the thing um before it's not something before we basically see our right to do that uh being a part of the history books and not something we currently get to um engage in so uh, those are the things I can come off, uh, come, I, I come up with off the top of my head. Um, and as a, uh, as a final note, um, sure. I will say, um, as a final note, before we close out today, I will say, and this is very important that this is understood when you're voting, you, if you're only voting in your major elections, you're not voting in every election. That is not wise to say the least. I will say one thing and one thing only, uh, voting is exercising a right and exercise is work. When Shalise says that you need to research the candidates, you need to research the candidates. Researching the candidates does not mean listening to what they say. You must see what they do, listen to what they say, and then see what other people say about them. That's the whole point. It's exercising a right. You are not doing a right, you are exercising a right. So whenever you're talking about making sure that your rights are protected, make sure that you're doing that work. Don't just vote for the person that says, oh, yeah, this hot tough, this hot button issue, I'll fix it. Yeah, whatever. Right. That there might just be trying to get elected. You need to check to see what your potential elected representatives are doing or are not doing. Um, it's very, very important to remember that. For example, it's an, it's astounding how many people don't know about Biden's history with criminal law. I'll leave it there. But that's it. Is, <laughs> it's astounding. But that's all yeah. I'll say for today's episode before we get too long in the tooth. Um, this has been Shroom Guru with uh, Shalise Blythe. Thank you very much for coming on, and um, we'll all see you later. Yeah. Thank bye you very bye. much. Yeah, bye.